There's something called the planetary perspective, which is what was coined when people first saw the Earth from space. We need to realize how small we actually are. We're just one small pale blue dot in this vast universe of ours. There's really so much beyond just what's on Earth, and I think that's really what I'm trying to advocate for. There are already one million pieces of space debris in low Earth orbit. If we don't start to do something about this soon, it's only going to multiply. We're already on a polluted planet, and in our efforts to explore further, we're being trapped by another layer of pollution that we've created. SEER tracking is providing collisional predictions of space debris and satellites with the ultimate goal of creating a more sustainable space environment. Hi, my name is Amber Yang. I am 22 years old and I am the founder of SEER tracking and also a student at Stanford University. I grew up in Orlando, Florida, near the Kennedy Space Center, so I would visit every single weekend when I was younger. Would rather go there than like Disney World. I just loved it and knew that this was something I wanted to pursue. Since the start of the human space program, people have been putting things up into space without really any consideration about, you know, what are the potential negative impacts there. All of the debris that's been up there since the start of the human space program is still up there. Space debris is any man-made part that can range from as small as a space fleck to as big as like a defunct satellite. What we saw in like the past 10 or 20 years was that um, things started to collide with each other. And what was happening was that when these two satellites were colliding, they were producing so many fragmented parts that would then potentially cause collisions with other objects. It's estimated that there's upwards of 1 million pieces of debris traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. 900,000 of those debris pieces are actually not trackable because they're between the size of one centimeter to 10 centimeters. So they're actually not detectable by radar system. There was actually a paint fleck that collided with an International Space Station window and completely damaged that window and it had to be replaced. It would be terrible if we lost a life because of space debris. You can think of every single piece of space debris having a gravitational force relationship with the Earth. Newton's law of gravitation basically says that two masses or planets such as M1 and M2 have a gravitational force and pull to each other, which keeps them in orbit. But the thing with space debris is that it moves so quickly and it's subject to so many external forces that you can't really use classical physics equations. So the approach that I'm working on with my company, SEER Tracking, is we're using an artificial intelligence-based approach to predict better orbits. Right now, I am coding up some stuff that I use for my company's algorithm. So I developed this, the main algorithm and software myself, starting from when I was in high school. We take our space debris data from a publicly available database. We then take specific satellites that are requested from the companies that we work for and provide a prediction of where we think that satellite will be, all the way up to a month from the current date. And we use that to provide collision predictions. I'm at the point now where I'm really using data numbers and the math to prove to companies that space debris is an issue that they should be concerned about. In the future, I really want to be able to use my voice and my passion to advocate for the space debris issue. There's currently one million pieces of space debris in low Earth orbit. By the year 2060, that number will become 1.2 million pieces of space debris in low Earth orbit. And as you can see, that will just create a very, very crowded environment. In the Industrial Revolution, no one was aware of the effects that carbon would have on our atmosphere. So I think in a similar vein, I, I would encourage people to start thinking about this problem as a, a form of prevention. We don't want it to be a similar thing to what we're experiencing now with the climate and that we're taking action once it's too late. It would just be hugely tragic if a century, two centuries from now, people will have trashed low Earth orbit so much that we can't even get out and explore other planets, other galaxies beyond ours. Space was my first interest in science, wondering what is out there beyond Earth? Why are we here? I think those are very fundamental questions of being a human. 
I think my biggest dream is to really be a part of the conversation of figuring out what space will look like. I really think that I'm bringing in a new perspective and a new voice that is really in tune with a younger movement of you know, protecting our planet, holding people accountable. And I think that's what's really most important to me. People need to realize that we also live in space and we are just one planet out here in this large, beautiful universe of ours.